Okay, so recently Mecotronics sent me this R58X in exchange for a review and it is an incredibly powerful mini PC. But they've now sent me another one uh, and this is the R58 Mini and uh, it is the same RK3588 processor so performance is going to be awesome on it. But as you can see it's quite a bit smaller and uh, has a few different options on connectivity as well. I'll go through that a bit later but first of all uh, while I've still got Android on here because I'm going to install Debian and show how to install it onto this R58 Mini, uh, I just wanted to show how good PS2 was. I showed one game previously and uh, it was impressive, but I've actually changed the settings and I've got even better PS2 performance. So let's try a bit of the PS2 emulator Ether SX2. So you can see I've got a few games on here, uh, so let's try a bit of Downhill Domination. And I'm using this on rendering times two. I haven't changed any other setting. I haven't really got used to the controls on this yet, and it is incredibly frantic. But you'll get an idea of the speed and how well it keeps up with it. Yeah, and this runs incredibly well. I'd not tried this before. Uh, I'd always wanted to try it, but I had an Xbox back in the day. But uh, yeah, lovely and smooth, really, really fast, really nice performance. So a bit of GTA San Andreas. So you can see the environment looks great on this, really, really impressive, lovely and smooth. Seems to be holding a 30 FPS pretty well. So let's try something else. This is a great game, very atmospheric and uh, yeah, really nice gameplay on it. So you've got right two for first person combat, left two for this zoomed out view, which is so cool. Yeah, very nice. Let's try something else. Pro Evolution Soccer is looking great and works fine. This que o programa conheceu há 10 anos, buscando a fama em vários cantos do país. Caco Barcelos e Sue. So SSX3 needs to be put on one times resolution uh, to work, but still is slow. Uh, so it's obviously quite a hard game to emulate. So back on two times rendering, Shadow of the Colossus looks incredible. I don't know what it's going to be like uh, in the heat of the battle, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very nice in this environment. And just while it's playing it, if I put my hand on it, it really doesn't generate a lot of heat and there's no fan. It is completely silent. Yeah, this definitely runs better on one times resolution. The mini PC comes as standard with Android install, which you've just seen running. Uh, it also comes with the Play Store and everything on that works great. Exactly the same as my previous video. But now I've plugged in a little mini PC, a Windows device, to be able to flash the new software to it. So I'm going to put Debian on this. So let's launch the tool which was sent to me in an email. And you can see there's a few docs here as well. So let's open that up. You can see it says no devices found at the moment. Switch it on. Then I've got to press and hold the recovery button and then press the reset button in once and let go. Okay, so found one loader device has shown up. Uh, so let's go to upgrade firmware and I actually need to unzip the file. Now, uh, I've got two files on here look, for RK3588, both are Debian. Uh, this one is the one for the R58X and this one is for the R58 Mini. I've added in the two model numbers because I got sent this one first without R58X in it and it's actually not suitable for the R58. I flashed it and it didn't work. So this is the one you want. Uh, RK3588 mini underscore Debian. That will be the file. As I say, I've added in R58 just so that I remember uh, when I'm archiving these files if I need it in the future. So if I right click and uh, go down to WinRAR and extract here. And that will create an image file a bit like I've done with this one here. Okay, so that's done. So let's click back on this tool and go to firmware. And the one I need is the mini Debian one. And open, go to upgrade, and it will start to flash to the EMMC drive inside this little mini PC. And on the screen it says reset device success. And if I go down to the device, you can see it's got a flashing light. So I'm going to plug the HDMI in here because uh, I'm not sure what I have to do next. Oh, it's already booted up. I wasn't expecting that. So let's unplug the USB-C cable, pop my mouse keyboard into here. 
So let's try NeoFetch. Uh, so if I'd start typing terminal, sudo apt install NeoFetch, and type in NeoFetch to launch it. So Debian 11, uh, so 64 bit, RK3588 mini PC, kernel 5.10.66. So I'm running at 1920 by 1080, which is what the monitor is. And it says CPU 1.8 gigahertz, uh, and this is the 8 gig model. Okay, let's find a different background, see if the web browser works. Let's do a search for 1080 wallpaper. That looks like it might be quite nice. Let's go with this one. Oh, 768. Mind you, it might give me a 1080 on the page. Download original. Save image as. I'll save it in downloads for now. Yeah, it's all, it all feels nice and snappy. I mean, I didn't expect it not to feel snappy. Uh, so change background, add a picture. So, oh, it's found the downloaded one already, look. So let's click on that. Yep, looks nice. Uh, so the Windows key brings up the menu and if you want an app, you just start typing. So uh, I'm not sure if Gparted is on here. It's not. Well, let's install Gparted. So. Okay, so that should be installed now. Let's try that. Yeah, there it is. So the user is Blueberry. Let's just try root. Which is not. <laughs> oh dear. So I've just sent an email to the Mechatronics team, but I'm going to try Blueberry uh, just in case. Often the password, ah, there you go. I've got it. So the username is Blueberry and the password is Blueberry. And this is a 64 gig EMMC drive. You can see all these partitions. And uh, the main operating system partition is expanded, so I don't need to do anything with that. Perfect. So what software comes, I mean, this will just be standard Debian, I guess. So Firefox, so it comes with Chromium as well, which I would think it doesn't normally. Uh, Cheese, which is the camera app. Rhythmbox, Pulse Audio. Oh, Synaptic Store is there, which is good. Text editor, yeah, that's to be expected. But no other apps, so it's just a page of apps and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at the about. Uh, so settings, scroll down to the bottom and about. Uh, so what have we got? Device name, Poodle. Uh, memory 7.5, processor not listed. So graphics, ARM release, underscore version of this libmally is G6P0, and it goes on for a while. Uh, disk capacity. Debian 11, 64 bit, yeah, all the same sort of stuff as we had from NeoFetch. So this is 4K playback on YouTube and it seemed to be coping pretty well with it, although uh, it, I've just noticed it's dropped down to 1440, but it was playing at 4K and it wasn't dropping very many frames at all. Uh, it did have a little moment when it skipped a bit, but uh, yeah, overall pretty good. Not as good as Android, uh, that was better in this test, but still very good. And if we tap the Windows key, you can see that the temperatures are staying around about 46, 47. So it does keep itself nice and cool, even when playing 4K video. So a note on the EMMC drive. Uh, so if I go back into Gparted, uh, as I was installing things and playing around and downloading 8K videos, uh, I found that uh, it was running out of space and it shouldn't have been. And if we have a look at Gparted, this partition was expanded before. And actually I had to shrink this partition and move it over to the end and extend this one. Obviously this is an early build of Debian, um, but uh, as, as long as you install Gparted, it's very, very easy to do that. Regarding the 8K videos, uh, hardware GPU isn't officially supported in this. Uh, you can tell because on something like Kodi, uh, the performance wasn't that great. Uh, it, in fact, it couldn't, it struggled to play 8K video. Whereas in Android, which this, this system is definitely very, very well supported in Android. If you watch the other video, uh, the R58X, Android performance was, was really, really fast, really, really nice. Uh, Linux, as an operating system, no problem at all. But if you're looking at higher end video and, uh, and also gaming, things like that, emulation, it's not gonna be as good at the moment, but obviously that will change uh, if we get GPU support in the future, which is very hard on Linux, but you never know. So let's go for this video, which did play in Android. And I think it's trying to play it. Yeah, so you can see that it, it, it isn't really doing it. And I've pressed escape and it takes a few seconds to, uh, to go back. So let's shut down Cody, which otherwise works fine. 
uh, and 1080 was absolutely fine. But when you get up into the higher resolutions, uh, oh no, I don't want to do power off system. And I think that means it's going to shut itself down. <laughs> oh dear. Now I'm back in and I wanted to have a look at um, the browser speeds. And I've already done this test. I did it last night uh, just to show how well it compares to a Raspberry Pi 4. Obviously a Raspberry Pi 4 is or should be a much cheaper item uh, and also has been out a couple of years or more. Uh, but uh, I just thought I'd do it to see how well the browser was supported at this stage. So here are the results I got in Firefox. So uh, browser bench 44, which was better than anything I had on the Pi 4. Uh, speed battle 327.35. Uh, which actually wasn't as good as 64-bit Chromium. Uh, so the Pi wins on that one, which it obviously definitely shouldn't. Uh, Web XPRT3, 127, which was definitely higher. Uh, and Whirlpool 791, which was definitely higher, apart from Puffin. But I've explained in that video how, because Puffin's a cloud-based browser, you can't really compare it. But then when we look at Chromium, Chromium was much better uh, on most things. Uh, not on WebXPRT, but on everything else. So 54.11 on BrowserBench, which compares with uh, even 31.4 on Puffin. So BrowserBench definitely much better. Uh, Speed Battle 705, which I think is a really good score. Yeah, even beat Puffin again. Uh, WebXPRT 118, which again was much quicker. And on Whirlpool 1797. So really good scores on Chromium, but the GPU definitely doesn't seem to be supported in this build. Uh, properly, whereas in Android, I should probably do, should probably have done the tests in Android because Android works really, really well on this board at this stage. Now I'm going to shut this down now because I wanted to show uh, the HDMI in, but that's supported in Android. I'm not sure if it's supported in Linux. I couldn't find it on there, but it support it works really well on Android. So I'm going to switch back to the R58X so I can just show how that works. Okay, so I plugged back in the R58X, uh, which has got Android on it. This is the Mini that I'm doing in this video, really. But just to show this bit, uh, so if I plug in my iPad uh, into USB-C, this is a USB-C to HDMI adapter, plugged into the HDMI in on the back of this device. And if I launch Live TV, you can see my iPad comes up. So if I hold my iPad up, uh, this is the video I'm editing at the moment. So if you wanted to see all the information on there. You can see it's nice and snappy. Uh, it uh, definitely works really well. Uh, if I called up a video and just get it to play, I can also use a screen capture device, X Recorder. I installed this from the Play Store. It was the first one that came up as a screen recorder uh, and had quite good reviews and it's free. So let's hit record and start now. And then we can switch back to live TV. Microphone is occupied. Not sure about how to deal with the sound. Maybe there's a setting on there that allows you to change between that. But uh, from a video point of view, you can see it's recording the video. Oh, I'm trying to maximize it on here. Uh, so if I maximize it on my iPad, but uh, the HDMI in works really well. And I thought about this. Uh, imagine if you could use this with remote desktop you could get any feed or any sort of live TV service streaming through a system. Uh, I might look at that in the future, but uh, yeah, very pleased with that. And if we go back into X Recorder, you can see that I've got the video here. So if I hit play on that, you'll see the bit where I was queuing it up, where I start playing it on the iPad. So it actually captures everything, all the overlays and everything that's on there. Uh, if I skip on a bit to get to the full screen bit, uh, you can see that it does a pretty good job, really, considering it's screen capturing on Android through an HDMI input. That's pretty impressive. Just to do a quick comparison on the size of the two devices. So the Mini is definitely deeper, but it is uh, not as wide as a unit. And uh, connectivity is different on the front. So we've got an infrared sensor, which isn't mentioned on the R58X. Uh, we've got USB 3. Both of them have got one USB 3 port. Uh, obviously, we've got the analog jacks here, so if you're more interested in the analog side of it, uh, you can always do that with a USB adapter, but that uses up another port. So it depends what sort of usage you're going to use this for. Uh, a couple of USB 2 sockets on both. 
uh, USB-C connection and we've got those two buttons that we use reset and recovery are on both units but you also have a debug uh, which I haven't had to use and haven't found in any of the documentation so I'm not so worried about that on this side nothing at all but we have got a display port adapter and a SATA uh, I've got a cable for the SATA drive so if we spin that around as well so on the back uh, we've got the dual LAN connections whereas we've only got one on the mini uh, but we do have two HDMI outs as well as that display port whereas on here we've only got one HDMI out and a display port so they are very different so have a look through the specs and see what's going to work for you the multi pin out option as well is different obviously both of them have got the dual Wi-Fi antennas which I haven't put on mine because I was using Ethernet and the lid slides off to reveal the board inside. You can see it's got that nice big heat sink. It definitely keeps itself very cool. Even on the PS2 emulation, it wasn't getting hot. Uh, and you can see in here, this is the SATA connection. So you'd have to take the lid off to connect a SATA drive to it. So let's have a look at what comes in the box. So we've got just a standard HDMI cable. We've got a couple of Wi-Fi antennas. This is the dongle for the remote control and uh, it's similar to an LG remote control in appearance and uh, if you want to see the other video on the R58X I go into a bit more detail and show it operating. Uh, we've got USB-C to A data cable. Uh, this is the power brick that comes with it which is 12 volt 3 amp and has just a standard connector type. And this is the uh, SATA ribbon cable as you can see here for running an SSD. I've just connected it up to a Windows device because I remember seeing on this, but I forgot to mention, if we go to advanced function and read flash info, you can see that the EMMC drive is made by Samsung, which is nice to see. A very good storage manufacturer. So thanks very much to Mikotronics for sending me this. Uh, it's a really impressive piece of kit, very powerful. Definitely would like to see the operating systems on a server somewhere. Um, because the way I've got the operating systems was to email Mikotronics and then they sent me a link and I download it from there. It'd be nice to see everything all in one place uh, with support docs and things like that so that you can download everything as soon as you need it. That said, the communications have been really good and every time I've emailed and asked for something they've come back really quickly. Uh, they have assured me as well there's going to be a new firmware with a UEFI function uh, because I asked about if you wanted to uh, boot from an M.2 drive or an SSD drive. So that's coming. And just as a last thing, let's open a few things up because, so even though we haven't got GPU support, everything feels really quite snappy. Oh, the other thing was the software um, part doesn't work. Uh, so the software store, uh, that said, uh, if I type in SYN, Synaptic comes up and that does work. And I download and install a few things with that just close that down but if I press the Windows key now you can see uh, I can very easily switch between various different things and it's nice and snappy yeah the software store um, so it shows the installed apps uh, but doesn't show the update this is the uh, GNOME software store and uh, I did try a few things but I couldn't get it up and running but yeah as you can see even without that GPU support it is very snappy which is to be expected because the RK3588 is a very nice chip so anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.